hi everyone you're welcome back to my channel my name is nancy and if you're new to my channel kindly subscribe share and like my videos and also put on your notification bell to be notified when i upload new tutorials so this is a requested tutorial and in today's class i'll be showing you how to make a pants so the difference between this tutorial and the previous tutorial i've made on pants is that the waistband for the front piece will be made without inserting an elastic into it why the waistband for the back piece will have an elastic inserted into it and in this tutorial i'll be showing you the simplest way and the neatest way to achieve this style so these are the essential measurements i'll be working with i have the waist circumference the hip circumference the crotch depth the length of the trouser and the tie circumference so let's get started the amount of fabric i used in achieving this pants is one and a half yard the first step is to fold the fabric into two. To know the wideness of the fold, you divide the tie circumference by two, then you had one inch in allowance to that. So after I folded this fabric into two, the first step was to mark the starting line, which will be the waistline. So on the waistline, I'll be attaching a waistband of two inches. This simply means that I'll subtract about 1.5 inches from the starting line. So by the time I sew it, it means that the waistband will be able to take it to two inches. All right, the next line is the hip line, which is nine inches. After the hip line, the next line is the crotch depth line, which is 11 inches. And the full length of the pants, which is 40 inches. plus 2 inches sewing allowance added to the M, making it 42 inches altogether. Please take note that for this pants, the entire waistband on the back piece, we have an elastic inserted into it. And also take note that there is no zipper on this pants. This simply means that you don't need to make any hip curve when marking. On the waistline, you are supposed to place the waist circumference measurements on it. But because of this particular pants we are trying to achieve, you don't need the waist circumference at all. Now we'll be working with the hip circumference. So you can easily put on the pants without stressing. The hip circumference divided by 4 is 10.75. I'll place this on the waist circumference. And to add 1 inch to an allowance to decide to make it... 11.75 inches now on the hip line i also place the hip circumference divided by four plus one is in allowance to the side to connect the waist points to the hip point and i also extend this line vertically downwards to the crotch depth line so this is my waistline the hip line and the crotch depth line on the crotch depth line you need to place the tie circumference take note that the tie circumference is always divided by two our tie circumference is 28 inches divided by 2. I have 14 inches plus 1 inch sewing allowance to the side to connect this tie point to the hip point in form of a curve. And this will be the crotch curve of the front piece. Alright, to get the M circumference, I'll be subtracting 4 inches from the tie circumference. So the tie circumference is 28 inches divided by 2. That's 14 inches. From that 14 inches, I'll be subtracting 4 inches from that and which will make it 10 inches. Now, I'll place that 10 inches measurement on the M line. Now I've marked 10 inches on the M to connect this point to the tie circumference as shown. Now I'll trim out the front piece.
and because the fabric was folded into two you need to slit this side of the fold The next step is to cut out the back piece. To get the back piece, I folded the fabric into two and I placed the front piece directly on the folded fabric, making sure that I have two inches on this side of the fold. The difference between the front piece and the back piece is that I have two inches folded on this side and it's these two inches that usually makes the back piece of the pants to be wider than the front piece of the pants. And the second difference between the front piece and the back piece is that the waist for the back piece is usually higher than the front piece but now I made it 1.5 inches higher than the front piece to connect it to the tip of this edge. If it was for a pants with a belt hole i would have increased it to two inches but because it's just an elastic i increased it to just one inch now i'll cut out the back piece And since the back piece was also on fold, I need to slit this fold open. Obviously, the back piece is wider than the front piece. So let's get started with the sewing. This is the front piece of the pants. I'll take this to the sewing machine to secure the waist to the crotch curve by half inch. And on the back piece of the pants, I'll also place the two pieces on each other to secure the waist to the crotch curve by half inch. After I secure the crotch curve for both the back piece of the pants and the front piece of the pants, I'll place the front piece of the pants on the back piece of the pants, right side to right side, to take this to the sewing machine to secure the sides by half inch. So I've secured the sides and the next step is to secure the flap straight down to the end, making sure that this center line on the bottom of the crotch curve aligns together. So this will be secured by half inch. The next step is to turn the pants to the right side of the fabric. Now to get the waistband of this pants, you need to place your tape on the center line of the back piece to measure the entire waist circumference. So the entire waist circumference is 44 inches. This simply means that 
the length of the waistband should be 44 inches but because of the stitches i'll be using to join both sides together i have to make that waistband 45 inches i'm so sorry this clip was in a portrait position i noticed it when i was trying to compile the videos together okay so this is the waistband i'm working with it's five inches wide i folded it into two and i used a gum stay to glue half parts of the waistband and the length of this waistband is 45 inches now the next step is to attach the waistband to the waist of the pants to do this please take note that i'm going to be working with the center line of the back piece of the pants i'm not using the center line on the front piece i'm working with the back piece center line because i am so sure that so many people don't want to see joining in the center front of their pants though it will be very neat i'll show you how this will be done so like i said earlier this is the center line of the back piece i'm going to place my band directly on it folding the edge of the band half inch in and placing it on the wrong side of the center line of my back piece as shown now i'll take this to the sewing machine to show you how this will be done now i folded this edge of the band in by half inch i placed it on the wrong side of the center line of the back piece of the pants <laughs> Then I stitched it all through the waistline by half inch. So I'm almost getting to the center line of where I started sewing. So at this point, you need to place the remaining part of the waistband directly on the beginning of the waistband making sure that it overlaps on each other as shown all right guys so this is how the band will be now i'll flip the waistband to the right side of the fabric as shown then you can see that there is an opening here but because of that half inch we folded when we started sewing the band we are going to fold it in such a way that it relaxes or overlaps on the waistband below it as shown now i'll make a stretch stitch to secure it on each other so this is the best and the simplest method to apply when making pants like this now i'll flip the waistband to the wrong side to trim out the excess waistband as shown so this won't be like an hindrance when inserting the elastic into it all right guys this is the final outcome of the joining you can see how neat it is The next step is to insert the elastic into the back piece of the waistband. How do I achieve this? Obviously, you can see that there's a joining here and this joining is on one side of the pants. So I inserted my elastic into it, making sure that it's past the joining a little so I can make a stretch stitch to secure the elastic first this way. The essence of making this stretch stitch was to hold down the elastic so it doesn't pull off. After this, I'll just insert the elastic properly into the band. Then I'll fold the edges of the band to secure the edges of the band, making sure that I'm not sewing directly on the elastic band. Take note that this is the back piece of the pants and I am securing these edges of the band straight down. To the center line of the back piece and i'll keep stitching the edges of the band till i get to the other side seam of the pants so i've gotten to the other side seam of the pants and this is the point where the other end of the elastic band will be stitched But before that, let me show you how I stitched 
the beginning of the waistband can you see it i brought it out a little before stitching it following the first side seam as a guide the next step is to stretch out the elastic in such a way that you feel comfortable about how the elastic has squeezed the waistband and once you are comfortable with that all you have to do is to raise the machine footer so you can make a stretch stitch to hold down the elastic After you've used this other side seam as a guide in stitching the elastic, you cut the excess elastic out. Then now, you can now sew the edges of the front piece of the band. Alright, so for the person that requested for this tutorial, I'm sure that you can see that it's so easy to attach the waistband on just the back piece of your pants. And to make this very unique, you can also stitch directly on the elastic and maybe you can stitch the center of the elastic starting from the first side seam to the second side seam of your pants. So I decided to make two stitches directly on the elastic. You can make yours to be a single stitch, depends on how you want the beauty of the elastic band to be. Alright, this is the front piece of the pants. And this is the back piece of the pants. You can see how very beautiful it is. It is advisable to always fold your pants this way before securing the M so you can be sure of the length of the pants. If it's too long or one is longer than one, this is the point where you can actually trim the M of the pants. So let's try that out since the length of my pants is 40 inches i'm going to place my tape directly on the waistline of this pants and what i have here is 42 inches but looking at it you can see that the edges of the m isn't equal so let me trim that first since it doesn't affect the main measurements of the pants and now it's equal the next step is to see how many inches you'll be folding in so i can see that i need to be folding about 1.5 inches in now I'm going to fold this down, use my pressing iron to secure it. So the pressing iron will create a line that will help me in stitching the M properly. Alright guys, thanks for watching to the very end. This is the final outcome of the pants. You should give it a try and I hope this tutorial was helpful. And always feel free to send your tutorial request to the Telegram group. I'll be dropping the link in the description box. Thank you so, so much. And if you are new to my channel, please do not forget to subscribe and also turn on your notification bell.